Welcome back to Sunday Night in America. Another week, another batch of alarming news as it relates to our young people. Depression, suicide, loneliness, the generation with access to the most information seems to be struggling in ways perhaps our generations did not. The Surgeon General continues to sound the alarm. We're in the middle of a youth mental health crisis in America. I've said before that this, this is the defining public health challenge of our time. And I'm very concerned that social media has become an important contributor to the pain and the, the, the struggles that many of our young people are facing. He's calling for new safeguards to protect children from online dangers. He believes policymakers, parents, and platforms should team up to create new limits. Children cannot legally smoke, drink, drive, sign contracts, vote, or marry. But should they have the freedom to do something increasingly viewed as harmful to their well-being. Joining us now is the co-founder of the Log Off Movement, Emma Lemke. Thank you so much for joining us, Emma. All right, tell me what you think. Is it enough to let social media companies police themselves? Is it enough to let parents just decide what's best for their own children? Or, much as I hate to say it, should the government get involved and set parameters? That's a wonderful question and one that I think many people are beginning to grapple with. Specifically in looking at this announcement from the Surgeon General, I think it shows that this is going to be a multi-stakeholder strategy to be able to protect kids online. But the onus should really fall on the tech companies to protect children. And policymakers need to step up to begin to figure out how to regulate those companies because in the status quo, we've seen that these companies cannot regulate themselves. They have prioritized getting profit over the safety, well-being, and just general health of their young users. All right, Emma, I have relied upon you in the past for help on this issue because uh, I, I, social media is just not part of my life and it wasn't part of my mm -hmm. life growing up. So help us understand, is it the content of what is consumed that is addictive? Or is it just the addictive properties of the platform? What in your judgment makes social media as dangerous as the Surgeon General says it is? There are many things, but I think one important thing to understand is how much time and attention went into creating these technologies and these social media platforms to keep you on. For instance, features like autoplay that load a video very quickly after you've chosen one, features like the endless scroll, they are designed to keep you and young people hooked to maximize your attention. And what that means is you are being robbed of your time and energy when as a kid you should be playing and talking with people and experiencing the world. But in reality, you're stuck mindlessly scrolling, comparing yourself to others, and honestly feeling disconnected. And while there are many benefits of the online world, we are seeing the increasing harms as the youth mental health crisis has only gotten worse. All right, Emma, I watched you testify before the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee, it may have been. Um, and, and sometimes mm -hmm. I say, if uh, I'll ask someone, if you're going to be, if you're the president, what would you do? You may be the president one day, Emma, so I'm going <laughs> to ask you, if you're the president, give us three things you would do to help the next generation of children. If you were the president today, what would you do to help your generation? That's a wonderful question, and I think it's pretty simple. One, I would go about creating common sense safeguards by limiting the exposure to, of young people to this harmful content by placing design features into regulatory structures. For instance, banning surveillance um, on kids, the extraction of data that isn't necessary to provide a service, things like that turning off autoplay by default to protect young people, to give them their agency and power back in making decisions on their own online screen time usage. Another thing I would do would be increasing the transparency of these algorithmic systems that are being used. By increasing transparency for researchers and policymakers, we can create more informed and effective solutions moving forward to protect the next generation. And third, 
I would simply listen to the young people who've experienced this themselves. By listening to stories, by giving young people a place at the table to help inform solutions and build out these solutions, we can begin to see how we can effectively address this issue in a very cohesive, holistic manner. So those are the three things that I would do, but again, this is an all and above approach. We need to take on as many different voices into this mix and really attack this with as many stakeholders involved. Well, Emma, I'm, I'm going to keep listening to you because, uh, number one, you're extremely knowledgeable, and number two, you communicate it in a way that even I can understand it. So <laughs> thank you, Emma Lemke, for joining us uh, once again on this very important issue. You take care, okay?